Good morning, everybody. And my name is Chris Sanders from the CRCMQ program and welcome to the 103rd Zoom session uh, that we've had since lockdown. And I'm really pleased that we have another guest speakers today. Um, we have a, an organization called Hilti. And, and Hilti are um, tool manufacturers. You probably know them. They've got a, a, a short presentation that they're going to give us as well. So I'd like to welcome Jody Allcroft, Emma Blood, and Lydia Catterall, who are, um, as you can tell, if you wanted to know three people that work for Hilti, that's them because they're all wearing red and that's kind of a thing with Hilti um, and, and you'll hear about their culture and the way that they operate uh, as we go through. So thanks very much for joining us guys, really appreciate your time today and putting together the presentation. I'm going to share my screen so that you can, uh, everybody can see that. If you can see the screen, please do me a favour and give me a thumbs up. Great stuff, thank you Jody. And um, okay Jody and team, um, over to you guys. Thank you, Chris. Um, yeah, thank you for letting us uh, come and join your um, this slot and uh, let us uh, walk you through how we have managed throughout the pandemic. So on the call today, you've got um, myself, I'm Jodie Allcroft. I'm the credit and collection team leader and I've been at Hilti for 14 years. I've got Lydia Catterall with me. She's the Northern Europe credit and collection manager. She's been with Hilti for 32 years. And we've got Emma, she's a senior, Emma Blood, she's a senior credit specialist in, in GB and she's been with Hilti for six years. Um, so a bit of quick maths, that's 52 years of Hilti experience between the three of us, so not too bad. <laughs> so for those who don't know, um, Hilti, we service the professional construction industry. We offer software for design products and tools um, for work on site training testing and consultancy. We are an international company um, and we span over 120 countries and we employ 23,000 people but in GB there's um, a thousand people. Turnover for GB is around 125.3 million and we was accredited with the CICMQ in, since 2017. So that's a little bit about Hilta. So um, what, what I go through now is how we've managed in the pandemic through um, the last 12 to 15 months. Um, so in the first part of 2020, it was just normal days in the office, you know, radio was on. Um, and then in around March, on the radio, something broke out about COVID, but we did it in January and February, but in March this COVID word come, an email come and at the time we didn't think too much um, about the like COVID, we knew what it was, um, a virus and you know where it had come from. It wasn't until an email came out that everyone would have to go on with their IT equipment um, to make sure that they could log on at home to work at home and it was said that this would be for one month so what the company wanted to do, because it was a virus and it could spread, they didn't want all the team in the office and all at home, but we was going to do it where 50% was in the office and 50% was at home and we'd split it for the two weeks and then we'd swap over. So that day off, everyone went with all their IT equipment to make sure that they could log on at home. And this went so well, it was so smooth, but it wasn't a surprise. Um, I'm not sure if you remember back in 2010, in the January, we had one of the worst winters ever. Um, and this actually stopped a, a large amount of people getting into the office to do the work because they just couldn't travel. The buses weren't running, trains, and you know the roads was um, very dangerous. So. Back in 2010, as we made like this disaster recovery up and every team member who worked in the offices was set up with IT equipment to work from home. So we've all, we was already set up to work from home and come March 2020, this was a godsend. So off everyone went, they logged in and it, it all worked. Um, but as the day went on, bit by bit, places started to close I think children got sent home from school so another email come out to say no everyone just stay at home for now then as as days passed you know business had, businesses had to close especially the businesses that couldn't work from home 
hospitals became overcrowded and it was then that the word pandemic was mentioned. One month working at home turned into three. Holidays that people were looking forward to were being cancelled. Planes were stranded at airport, airports. And I think that's the time when we realised this is actually serious. So at first, all the teams was, it was great being at home. There's no travelling to and from work in the traffic. I mean, I go on the Mancunian way and... God, I, I was like, I'm so grateful I don't have to travel on that. But slowly it did become hard. The homeschooling was tough on our parents, you know, especially parents who were working at home and having to homeschool as well. Um, you know, it was tough. As And as a company, what we'd done, we looked at the working hours to help where we could. And this was not just in finance, this was throughout the company. So we let people work mornings if that suited them, um, do homeschooling in the afternoons and then do a bit later on at night, whatever, what, whatever worked for them um, and made their life a little easier during this hard time. You know, it really took flexible work into a new level. It worked in the credit team. We had we had people that needed help with the children at home. <clears throat> and as a team, we pulled together and we managed it well and we really supported the team members. Then meetings were still coming in because obviously we were still working. So um, all the meetings became virtual. We had children joining in, husbands walking past our wives, past the camera to get the ruler ready for the next lesson that they was teaching. Um, and my thought was that iPad sales would have gone up in the pandemic because I bet every child now owns an iPad. If it's not to do own learning, it's so you can do a call and you stick them in the car now. But as a team, we adapted very well to working from home and being able to do the job. However, we did realise very quickly that we would face some challenges we've overdue, we've overdue due to the pandemic. Can you go on to the next slide, please, Grace? So um, we started to get calls from a small number of customers who were looking for additional flexibility. What the company did, what Hilti did very well, is provided guidance very quickly on what we could and couldn't offer and to who. The team used their experience to manage customers' expectations. They had to have very hard, difficult conversations with customers, um, but these was managed exceptionally well. And the team, the feedback after it was they actually gained a lot from it. You know, they, they realised that, you know, they were very adaptable. They could, you know, um, they felt quite proud of what they'd achieved, especially when it was helping these customers. Um, and what we did see as well is some customers' immediate reactions was to cancel the direct debits. And again, as a company, we understood this and we was expecting it. So what we've done, we reviewed the credit and the collection, um, sorry, the collection process, particularly around the external collections to work with the customers to help them, but also while still minimising risk of bad debt. The team worked hard at maintaining customer relationships during a tough time. But what we did see is the trust starting to grow from the customers and between the teams. It was building up working relationships. And then what was happening is rather than them not answering our call, they was, they was getting, engaging in conversations with them around payment plans um, and what we could do for them. And, you know, calls that normally would last 10 minutes, they might have lasted 40 minutes, but this was a real turning point for the team. They felt very proud of what they were achieving at such a difficult time. As the, years, as, as the year went on, we continued to do all our reporting um, that we'd done um, each month. And during the pandemic, it was obviously more important that we knew where we, we were. But as the year went on, we realized that the DSO actually reduced e-billing increase. Now we did kind of take the opportunity because everyone was working at home that they was more um, eager to take up the e-billing because they weren't in the offices to get the post. Um, and as, con as construction began to open, again, it was around the July time, 
we've seen that direct debits were starting to be um, reinstated. Um, and as of today, we've seen that the number of customers who pay by direct debit um, has increased. The results all round were really good. So we have a controlling team who create a lot of reports for the company. And what they've done for us, we asked them about one for DSO, and this was at the, the back end of 2019. And what this report does, it drills down to territory level um, for sales. And we share this with sales um, each month. And the sales feedback was that they was very impressed with the level of detail that this report supplied them. And it made them understand the importance of DSO to the business, especially during the uncertain times. Um, and as a result of that, the DSO element is actually now in the sales targets for the sales team. And with the deeper understanding of the DSO within the sales team, we are starting to see a further reduction in the request for extended payment terms because they're actually understanding the impact it has on the DSO and with it being in them, their target, you know, they're quite eager to work with us even more than they did. Um, but also what this helps because people are paying on time and direct debits um, increasing, it's also helping us now with the no order on hold policy that we have at Hilter with um, certain customers. Obviously, the pandemic was a terrible time for everyone. You know, it, it, it was tough emotionally, uh, you know, even physically on some people. But looking back, um, it's enabled the credit and collection team at Hilti to shine and show the professionalism to the rest of the business. You know, they've managed the um, customer's abilities to pay up while keeping credit lines open for future sales. Um, and as a credit team, we are really proud of what we've achieved over the last 15 months. But what that shows is the impact, um, what the pandemic has had on the business. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to hand over to Lydia and she will take you through how the pandemic has impacted our people. OK, thanks, Jodie. Uh, Chris, if we can move to the next slide. Thank you. So yeah, so when we look at the well-being of our team members, um, Jodie's already touched on the fact that the impact working from home has had. Um, and whilst working from home has been great for some team members, for others, it, it has created some challenges. So both in GB and, and across Northern Europe, we have team members who are living alone. Um, others um, have to manage homeschooling or look after small children. So right from the very beginning, we recognised that we could be faced with challenges. So um, as a group, we decided that we needed to have some structure with um, our meetings, with our team members and also with each other. So um, we started with the team leader check-ins and, and this is all about people. So we needed to make sure that the team leaders themselves were managing OK, uh, as well as making sure that the teams were, were, were coping. Um, we kept a lookout for those who were living on their own and encouraged them to join any of the social online meetings um, with their colleagues. We also promoted all the services that were available through our healthcare provider. Um, but what was important for us was we wanted everybody to know that they weren't on their own. And any anxieties that was felt was, was not just from team members, but also team leaders too. So between the team leader group, we had regular catch ups where if a team leader was was facing a challenge in time, um, they would turn to the peers either for guidance or, or just to let off steam. So we then also had team check ins. So this is where um, each team had a short catch up with the teams. And um, we kept this short because we also realised that working from home had an impact on workload. So whilst we didn't have the commute and Jodie was telling you about her Mancunian Way com commute, um, what we found was people are tending to work longer hours, um, both at the, the start of the day and, and at the end of the day. Um, but we wanted them to have a, a chance to catch up with each other too. 
so in these team check-ins um there was there's no work topics discussed it was just a, a general chat and and it replaced the the weekly coffee break that most teams had um when we were in the office where we'd get together just to to have a coffee and uh, chat about um what 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 our plans were for for the week or or for the weekend we also have um, time out during our um, hub business meetings. So, so these are actually bi-monthly meetings that we have, which are two hours long and it's where the whole of the finance team get together and we, we discuss several um, topics. Um, and now this is online. We wanted to make sure that we had some me time allotted to the agenda and it, it really brought some fun to the meeting. So uh, we encouraged the teams to, to have, um, whether it was 15 minutes, 20 minutes, time out. So we had an extended break and we encouraged them to, to post pictures in the chat of the, of the uh, meeting of what they'd been up to. And let's just say there were some really interesting um, photos posted there. Um, so it, it, again, it, it was, just to bring a bit a bit of fun to those those long meetings and then on Fridays we have it's a wrap so um, this is a meeting that we have within our our, our working day and uh, three o'clock on a Friday afternoon is is the place to be and uh, we have a range of topics from themed meetings so this is where I think we've dressed up, we've had crazy hats, we've had celebrated St. George's Day, we celebrated Easter, we had an Easter Bake Off, which I'm sure Emma won. Um, we had um, Shakespeare's Day, we've had um, the, the now famous Bernie's Bingo, uh, and we, we've had quizzes. So, so my kids actually think I'm a bit mad because um, one minute I'm sat on a call wearing a Hilti um, hard hat, then I've got a baseball cap on and then a Hulk mask. So I think they're really confused about what I do for a living and uh, they're, they're not quite sure what my job entails. Um, but it, it, it's great fun. And um, not only do our GB team members join, we also extend this to our credit and collection colleagues across Northern Europe. Um, and again, I'm not sure what they quite make of bingo. So trying to explain the rules of um, all four corners, one line and a full house to our colleagues from Sweden, Denmark and, and Finland. Uh, yeah, that was, that was quite amusing and, and a challenge um, on its own. So uh, we had some great fun with that. Um, but what was important for us is to make sure everyone has a really good close to the week and a, a great start to the weekend. Okay, uh, next slide please, Chris. Okay. Um, so the next topic is um, around uh, training and development. So whilst we are all working from home, we wanted to make sure that we continued with any trainings that our um, teams are still able to develop themselves. So we had specific training for team leaders on, on mental health. So this is where all the team leaders receive training um, on this topic. And it was about how we can work with our team members who need help and really how how we manage some difficult conversations with team members who, who were struggling um, during working from home and, and, and just with general anxieties. And we wanted to make sure that everyone is aware of the services available to them, both internally, but also all the external agencies um, that, that can help. And um, whilst the team leaders receive training on mental health, um, a training plan has also been developed for, for all team members. And um, that is being relaunched again um, fairly shortly. And then when we talk about people development, um, everyone in our teams have an, an individual development plan and this is to help them progress with their um, Hilti career whether that's within their um, their current role or, or getting them ready for, for, for their next role at Hilti. So all the planned trainings continued uh, with our training school in Manchester and they delivered all the training online and this wasn't just for GB, this was also for, for our um, colleagues from Northern Europe credit teams. They, they also joined the trainings and um, they continued 
you know, with our product knowledge, leadership trainings, communication skills, um, presentation skills, uh, everything that that was available, they just continue to deliver. And we're also really lucky we, we have extensive training material available for us globally um, and locally, uh, which can help new and existing team members in the roles. And we do encourage all team members to book time in their schedules for their own development. So, you know, we, I mentioned earlier about the workload and how we tend to be working longer hours so we can kind of take on more topics and we're doing more. And sometimes our development can take a back seat. Um, so um, a lot of teams have developed their own own way of, of making sure that people have the time for development. And um, in my team, we, we adopted no, no meetings Fridays. So this is where we plan no meetings um, ourselves on a Friday. And we try to defer any of our, our global meetings to Monday to Thursdays. And what this does is it allow, allows us to manage the workload so we can close off any topics that we have this week and we can get ready for next week and we can also plan in a development topic that we want to work on so no meetings friday spread in so our hr team love the approach and um our, our hr business partner for finance is really pushing this for for the whole of hr to adopt it um in their area so the the next topic is um this virtual careers week okay so this kicks off in may so there's lots of different roles in hilti finance and uh, we do find that people move between teams um but teams are growing uh, and the roles are growing so this means that some of the the responsibilities change and we want to make sure that new and existing team members know what all the roles in finance look like so um, in 2019, we created um, Careers Week and this was created by finance. So it was for finance team members. And then it was anybody in the business who was interested in moving into um, any of our finance roles. So quite often we have people from customer services who are interested in moving into to finance and credit, we always say, is a great role where people can, can um, get some real good exposure to, to um, all areas of the business. So um, it was really successful uh, that we delivered it virtually um, in 2020. And uh, this time it was actually extended to the whole business. So um, all, all teams were involved. And this is when each team uh, presented their roles in, in, in their department. Uh, what are the key responsibilities of the roles? Um, what skills um, do the team members need or what qualifications are, are required for some roles? Um, and then we asked for key team members um, to uh, present their Hilti career history. And this is to show um, how um, we have um, diverse um, backgrounds and how successful they have been in achieving their latest roles. So sometimes when we look at career paths, we can think they're going in one direction and, and you know, people have come from all different backgrounds uh, within Hilti and obviously externally too. So again, it, it's been a great success. We've had um, fantastic feedback from, from all around the business. And uh, we've now extended this to, to um, our northern region. So we're all, previously it was just for GB colleagues. And now this is um, extended to uh, northern Europe as well. So all our um, northern Europe credit teams will join um, this year because obviously we want to attract them over to Manchester um, for, for development roles as well. Um, so, and the next one is actually later this month. So, okay. Um, so from wellbeing and um, development, um, I think I'll, I'll hand you over to Emma, who's gonna talk to you about um, our business as, as usual approach. Thanks, Lyd. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, so business as usual. The finance team are a very busy and hardworking department, but we also like to have fun. This didn't change during the pandemic. We had virtual quiz nights where we all took turns in hosting. We had family bingo nights where we saw the competitive side come out in our CFO. 
She is now very much looking forward to the first department night out at Bingo Hall. Um, not being allowed to be together didn't stop the credit and collection department from having a Christmas party either. One of the team organised a secret Santa using Elfster and we sent presents to each other in the post and we arranged a Zoom call and opened these with a drink. Obviously, this wasn't as good as a night out, but we were all still able to come together and have a good time. Not sure about everybody else, but my living room still looked like a party had happened the next morning. Uh, as you can see from the pictures on the slide, we actually had some new team members um, during the pandemic, um, new family members. Um, these were two babies uh, and a dog. At the beginning of each year, we have something called a kickoff. This is where the business closes for two days and we all come together in Manchester for a celebration of the previous year and the start of the new year. This year, Hilti felt it was still very important to do this. Although this was done virtually, we still felt the togetherness of the company and we're still able to celebrate the success. Age. Yes, we did have some that came out of last year. For this occasion, Hilti sent all employees the number one fashion item of last year, a hoodie. We also received a Grays box to enjoy while we were listening to the company updates and awards. A few years ago, Hilti made the decision to relocate the GB head office and distribution centre. Although through the uncertainty of last year, this is still going ahead as planned. As a team, um, a team was created with representatives from each department to ensure the move goes as smooth, smoothly as it can. They involved, they're all involved in decisions such as layouts and picking furniture and plants. We were all very excited for the move later this year. So as you can see, although obviously there was a lot of uncertainty of last year, we still managed to have fun. Okay, if you could move on to the next slide. So GEOS. GEOS stands for Global Employee Opinion Survey. Every year at Hilti, we take part in the GEOS survey. The results came in last year in the middle of a pandemic and they were amazing. Overall, the engagement score was 79%. Within the survey, the key engagement indicators that we measure are say, stay and strive. 84% of us would recommend Hilti as a great place to work. 75% say it would take a lot for them to leave the organisation. 75% also say they are inspired to do their best at work every day. In the finance department, we have 100% participation and the best engagement score we have ever had. Hilti takes the GS results very seriously. Every year when the results come in, the leadership team come together to analyze the results and put together an action plan to work on the areas of improvement. Throughout the year, we then update, or we are then updated on the changes that will be made. In addition, each operational team work on three areas highlighted within the survey results. These are topics like workload, development opportunities and reward and recognition. The team then select the GS ambassador who will then feed back to the leadership team. Hilti is very proud of everything we have achieved, especially over the pandemic. Uh, and we will now open for any questions. Thank you very much. Um... Emma, Lydia, and uh, and and Jody. Um, interestingly, jo uh, Lydia was speaking about um, you know how you got into your career. If you go onto the CICMQ page and go to articles, yeah, she knew this was coming. Go to the articles, and there is a how I got into credit management article that uh, that that uh, that Lydia wrote um, a, a year or so back, I think, or probably a bit longer than that now. Um, so yeah, so that, that's a, that's an in an interesting read for for everybody. Um, the um, I've got I've got a, a bucket load of questions. I, I always do on these things. I'm just going to stop uh, sharing my screen, and then then um, so I've got the, uh, the, the 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 chat box open as well. Um, the construction you spoke about at the beginning, Jody. You spoke about um, the construction industry and, and everything. But it kind of it, it did lock down for a short period, but it opened up very quickly, didn't it? Yeah. It didn't. It wasn't something that was kind of like shut like you know hospitality for example for for months and months on end it did come back quite quickly didn't it it was around july end of june and july i was having yeah. um actually having an extension bill 
um, and that had to pause. Um, and I remember listening to the news and obviously because I'm in the construction, I rang him and like, hey, the construction industry is back open. <laughs> All right, yeah, we'll be there. And yeah, it wasn't it wasn't that like it felt like a long time because you're talking yeah. a few months, but my husband only went back in the hospitality like two weeks ago. So yeah. it, it it wasn't anything like that. So yeah, it did yeah. open quite quickly. Yeah, and I know we've spoken about direct debits. We ran a session recently about direct debits and cancellations and stuff. But it's interesting what you said. You know, you had the initial the initial lockdown, everybody cancelled direct debits um uh to, to gain better control of their of their finances and then and then they then they started to increase again when mm-hmm. when when things are starting to start again so they're starting to come back yeah and great. i think people i think people as well are understanding this is my opinion is that with everything that has gone on you know they're quite prepared to you know direct debits okay mm. um but i think from our for our existing customers because that was the majority of the ones you know I think the team done a very good job because we didn't have anybody on furlough, a very good job of building relationships with these customers, you know, spending the time and the calls were tough. You know, someone was on the phone saying, look, you want me to pay you for my tool that's sat here. I've got four kids that need feeding and homeschooling. You know, what do you kind of say to that? But they managed it really well. And I think the trust built up with a customer base. Yeah. The other thing you, you mentioned, which is um, something which I uh, advocate very strongly, which is DSO in sales targets, ladies and gentlemen. If you're not doing it, then do it now. It's, um, it's brilliant. That, it, that worked for you guys, yeah? It did. Yeah. And <laughs> I've got a little story about this. And uh, one of the regional managers come and he said to me, George, you've got this customer on direct debit, but they want to go on six extended payment terms. Like, so I was like, right. So I got the report up and I went, blah, blah, blah. I said, right, well, if they do that, this is the, this is the impact. All oh, right, they're not having that. And he was like, <laughs> well, and, that, and, yeah, and now what? that's what they do. But it's took a lot of educating. You know, the report is very detailed. Um, and I think with people, when, you, when they're doing something and it's a target, they've got to really understand it. Mm-hmm. And that's what we've driven um, at Hilti. We've educated sales to look at DSO. And, and do they understand. I mean, one of the issues yeah. with sales has always been, you know, you, you talk about DSO and they have no clue what you're talking about. But I mean, this is mm-hmm. something you've educated the team to actually make sure they understand it, right? Yes. And and what we've found as well is because it is in their target. I don't know if salesmen are just target driven full stop, they're but because it, because it is in their target, they're interested. I've never done as many meetings around one subject than I have in the last probably eight months, and yeah, it's and fantastic. It, it when, when you get targets like that, and if they're if they're properly managed and properly communicated, it does change behaviour. Like the league table thing that I keep banging on about, it's really really important. If you can change the stakeholders' behaviour, then it does improve yeah. the performance. The other thing you mentioned. You mentioned very fleetingly, but I know that this is something that more than one person on this call is, is interesting in. Um, you have this no order on hold process. So this is where you basically don't put a customer on stop, right? Lydia, do you want to? <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, you, yeah. yeah, yeah, sure. So, so, so this, is a, this is a global initiative. So this isn't just just for um, GB that we have this initiative globally. Um, Some of the rules uh, may be slightly different in different countries, but but this is basically for um, our VIP customers. And um, the, the, the little rule there is there's no orders on block um due to credit limit okay so as long as a customer has no overdue debt then um we we will release the order and and the the key thing here is um when we select the customers to have to, to to have this service is we have to make sure so we have to work with our marketing team to make sure that we have the the, the right profiles so the, the customers who were willing to to you know to extend this risk to right so so um so you you, you so if you've got no overdue debt yeah um, but you've 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 bumped up against your credit limit yep you will continue to release the orders, even though yes. the credit limit is going to be um, overrun. As it yes. Were. Yeah. 
Right. Okay. Uh, so, so we oh, we okay. do we do still have um, obviously um, a process in place to um, you know we have our signature policies and things where you know orders of, of certain values need need approval. So. It, it, we we still have an approval policy there um but before where you know we we may ask for payments up front or you know we we may ask for for um undue items to be paid before we could release orders um we we basically remove the credit limit as a topic right right Right. Okay. That's a, that, that, that's good. I remember going to a, 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 a CICM meeting years ago, and there was a French uh, French credit manager there who said that he didn't operate credit limits at all. Yeah. And, uh, and this was like I don't know. It must have been some years ago, anyway. And um, and everybody looked at him as if he was completely barking. <laughs> so, yeah. But, you know, but it is it's interesting, isn't it? If you've got the processes in place, you understand your customer. You, yeah. you you can you can manage it. You've got a cooperation of the salespeople. Then these are the sorts of things that you can do, and you're not going to be seen as this you know the department that likes to say no. Yeah. And, and interesting, got a comment here from Angie, um, saying that um she's got a similar process. This is going back to the block uh, the block order and, and and the DSO target thing. Um, we have a similar sales target initiative where commissions are withdrawn once a debt goes beyond a certain period of overdue yes and i'm sure that andy has lost a few people off the christmas card list there by doing that but that that is something that i, that I introduced in a, in, a, in a client of mine um and uh yeah it was a tough it was a tough one um you had to get we had to get very very strong support from from everybody involved to, to do that and um, but we did do it we started off with everything that was over 180 day old and then we brought it back to 90 days and it was um it was quite challenging but it did have the desired effect so and when we when we worked in Shell, I did a lot of work in Shell, um, as did Pam, and um, and and the DSO was was the company preferred measure, and it included everybody in the business had to do that. And one of the things that we found with with large organisations and large corporates is they try and be too damn clever with their methods and procedures and certainly their formulas for commissions and things um, and, and targets and bonuses and stuff so that nobody really actually understands what they are um, and we've seen that a number of times with various clients so i'm still got i've still got my question anybody got any any questions that they want to raise while we're on here um, on how often do, oh yeah how often do you review credit limits that one's from at all um monthly monthly so for every customer or just when yeah. when there's an event or no, every month they get, um, it's an automated. Um... Yeah. The, the external rating is reviewed yeah. monthly, but the right. credit limit itself is um, reviewed um, it, within the system continually. It's so, live. Into... Yeah, we, 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 ha we operate on um, S4 HANA and we have um, a, a credit engine within, within um, SAP and it, looks at the internal ratings of a customer so as well as the external ratings um it looks at the internal ratings so it looks at overdues it looks at payment record so as soon as an item becomes aged um it will reflect on the internal rating as soon as a payment is is, is made um it then obviously reflects on the payment history so so um the as soon as the risk category changes, then obviously the, the credit limit changes as well. So it is very dynamic. Okay, um, right. Well, I, I, I've got some questions here. One, of, one or two of them are a little bit, um, probably a bit. Um, I, I won't record these the answers to these. So well, what I'll do is I will, I will, I will, um, I will sign off in terms of uh, the recording, and then we'll carry on talking and, and answering mm -hmm. any questions afterwards. So, um, for, for the benefit of the recording, thank you very much indeed, Lydia, Emma. And Jody from um, Hilti, absolutely brilliant. Well done. Um, and some in really interesting stuff there in, in what you do and how you manage it. So I'm going to stop recording now. Thanks very much indeed. This recording will be on YouTube um, probably in about four or five days time with a bit of luck. So thank you very much, everybody, for joining.